Oh yeah. Yeah. You have to do aerobic training and you have to track it so you can set maxes or you set a PR for a five minute row and you set a PR for a 10 minute row. And then you set a PR for a nasal breathing only 10 yep. minute row. I think we had this conversation before with training age. So the, like the higher your training age, the broader your range on a piece of cardio. So on a row or take a calorie per hour, you know, we'll say a thousand calories per hour. That's not particularly fast. So when you first start out fast is 1050 calories per hour and slow. Okay. Maybe they can do a slow pace, but they really don't have a gauge. So maybe they're down to like 800 or 850, but their fast isn't much faster than their slow. Yes. Yep. And that's okay. Yep. So what I have is that I have a little like definition of pacing that I kind of wrote down. It's nothing profound or anything, but at least it'll just keep me on track. And it's the idea of a pace or an appropriate pace, I guess, would be just going as fast as you can sustainably go for any given amount of work rest that's given to you. So could be more articulate, but I like the idea. <laughs> going as fast as you can that is sustainable yeah so it's like if it's a three minute workout then ideally you're going as fast as you possibly can for three minutes yep. but if it's three minutes on one minute off or even three minutes on three minutes off for five rounds that's a drastically different pace and it should be drastically different from the get-go you know but that is, I think, what's missed a lot of times is, is something just like that. They'll treat a three minute on, three minute off by five the same way as they would treat a three minute test. Yep. And that, I think, by far is the biggest mistake I see. That's, that's way too much pain for five rounds. Yeah. To do that. Yeah. And so you get that first round is like the output's way up here on the graph. The mm -hmm. second round's down a little bit. And then the third round is a complete drop off. And the last two rounds are just survival mode. I think Tim Ferriss wrote about this in his book, The 4-Hour Body. I think he was running with Brian McKenzie and they were doing, I don't know, 10 400s. And the first 400, Tim smoked it. Yep. Second 400, he was like neck and neck. And then, so third, which is 30% of the total work, he got smashed. And then it, you just can't recover from that point. And Brian, you know, was cool, collected. He had his pace. He just held what he needed to hold. And that doesn't mean it's not hard because in any sustainable effort, the last 15%, in my opinion, should just be mental toughness. Can you eat shit for 15% of whatever is left over? That's how you know that you that you hit the right pace is when that last like 15%, like you're saying, is ex incredibly difficult. Mm -hmm. But you you if you slow down at all, it's it's like one percent slow down or two percent slow down, but you yeah. pretty much maintain the same pace the whole way through. But it was excruciating at the end. That's when you know that yeah. you hit the right pace from start to finish. There's some cool studies like bonking from marathon runners, and there's some temperature readings. And the best marathoners, their temperature peaks when they cross the finish line. Wow. Right? Because they're getting hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter. And then when they can't get any hotter, they're done. So yeah. if you look at the people who finish like outside of the top 10, 15%, those people hit a peak and then their temperature drops and then they finish. They peak too fast. Yeah. And if you take that bike analogy, those people's body temperature is going to rise high in that first set of three minutes. It's going to go down a little bit. And then that second set, it's going to peak and they're never going to be able to hit that peak again. Yep. That's exactly just like, a, just like a car engine. It gets too hot. So you just have to like slowly hit that build. And I think that's really hard to do the longer you go. Yeah. I mean, I know for me personally, like basically if you say 20 minutes, it doesn't matter if it's 20 minutes or 30 minutes or 40 minutes or, yep. or whatever. I'm just pretty much going slow <laughs> the whole time. Anything 20 minutes and beyond, I'm just going slow the whole time. And then at, cert at a certain point, sometimes it's the, like if it is 40 minutes, let's say, like the volume of whatever it is, like if it's running at a certain point, 
maybe my knee or my calf will start to be like, Hey buddy, we're not ready for this volume yet. And so that will be something that slows me down. Mm -hmm. Even if it's like some sort of mixed modal training, there might be something in there that where the muscle fatigue just sets in. But usually if you say 20 minutes or longer, I'm just going slow the whole time. <laughs> like, yeah. My whole philosophy, and this hasn't translated to other types of conditioning with running. If I run faster, I'm done sooner. I'm, <laughs> but that doesn't work if you're running for time and not for distance. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, well, the interesting thing though with pacing that we're talking about is that it also applies not just to aerobic training, but also to that high intensity interval training. Mm -hmm. And so if you're doing like a short burst sort of workout, kind of similar to the 400 by 10, but even shorter, even if it was like 100 by 10, mm -hmm. or if you're on a bike and doing like 10 second sprint by 10, you know, you'd want to take enough rest in between each time where you could actually repeat the same effort that you did the first time. I know you're a smart guy. So how much rest do you take between a 45 second max, max assault bike? Oh my God. A 45 second max assault bike. Yep. How much rest? I mean, the minimum that I'm taking is five minutes. Yep. That's the minimum, but it could be closer to like seven. Yeah. Cool. And that's a reasonable amount of time to match the previous effort. Yeah. But so often you'll see workouts where it's like 45 second all out rest two minutes go again. Yeah. And it feels terrible. First of all, it feels terrible either way, but yeah. you're not going to be able to repeat your effort. No. So you're missing out on this, like whatever percentage that you're losing of training capacity. Yeah. So if you see that workout that let's say it's, let's say it's eight rounds, 45 seconds all on the uh, assault bike or echo bike or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then two minute rest, eight rounds of that 45 second on two minutes off. Now, if somebody's telling you that this is for some sort of like, I mean, that's a little long to be high output, but it is high. Yeah. It's not going to be max output, but it is pretty high, I guess. But 45 seconds I'm talking. So if somebody's saying that that's the purpose of the workouts to work on that high output, I'm going to say that that's a bad workout. Yep. I'm going to do 30 seconds hard and 15 seconds of sandbagging. Exactly. At best, you might, best. it might be down to like 20 seconds hard by the end of that or mm -hmm. less. But if you're in a position where you're going to do that workout anyways, and you've recognized that that is a bad workout for high end training, then I think your next option is to do the workout but do it in a way that is sustainable. So you do the 45 seconds, not all out, like you're selling your soul there the mm -hmm. first round, but you try and aim for what feels like 85% effort on that first round. So by round five, six, seven, eight, that 85% pace starts to get really cool. Yeah. And that's something where like, I wrote down a couple of things. So too much volume, too fast. No focus on technique, proper warm up for being a better person as an aerobic athlete. Those are the things that I see most often. But this is like, all right, where was I going with that? Hold on, I got this. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You have to do aerobic training and you have to track it so you can set maxes or you set a PR for a five minute row and you set a PR for a 10 minute row. And then you set a PR for a nasal breathing only 10 yep. minute row, mm -hmm. right? So the more variance that you do and the more you pay attention to it, the more you can dial in these specific efforts. Yeah, for sure. And then that's, you know, different time domains, there, five, 10, whatever, mm -hmm. but you can also take it the other way and still be aerobic. You can go down to 30 seconds on 30 seconds off. Mm -hmm is aerobic. If you do it for 20 minutes or you do yeah. it for 30 minutes or whatever, like that's going to be aerobic. At least it should be approached that way if you're going for that long. So that it, it, I usually think in terms of work to rest ratio. And so anytime I see that one to one, I always think aerobic regardless of yep. how long it actually is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's like classic strength and conditioning, like one oh one. You know, yeah. they put the different time domains, like three to one, two to one, and one to one. Yeah. But 
I mean, even for the highest intensity, I don't think three to one is enough rest no. to no. work. Yep. I mean, like, think about it like a deadlift. If I do a deadlift, it takes one second. <laughs> a three to one is three seconds. No, yeah. it doesn't, doesn't work like that. <laughs>